Welcome to Baku National Park. Located in the state of Sarawak, in Malaysian Borneo, Baku is one of the smallest national parks in Southeast Asia. But despite its small size, this park has incredible biodiversity and spectacular landscapes. The coastline is rich in towering rock formation, full of interesting textures and beautiful colors. Here you will find endemic proboscis monkeys that despite their big noses and bellies are able to move with outstanding agility. Baco is home to most types of forests found in the lowland of Borneo and moving along these environments you will be able to spot a lot of different types of animals, insects, beautiful butterflies, frogs and colorful snakes. Baku is also the perfect environment to see the main types of lowland nepenthes, also known as tropical picture plants, that thanks to their highly developed leaves are able to catch insects and use their nutrients as food. After a 20 minutes boat ride from Baku village, we reached the shore of Baku National Park. From the headquarters, we will walk along Lintang Trail, an almost six kilometers loop that will take us through all types of vegetation. Beach forest, mangroves, deep pterocarp forest, peat swamp forest, and the delicate cliff vegetation. At the beginning of the trail, we walk through the mangroves by the beach. And here, we spot the first animals often seen in this type of environment, the fiddler crabs. Very easy to recognize thanks to their single oversized claw. They're often seen fighting each other using their big claws to defend their territory and also to impress the females. As we continue further, a set of wooden stairs takes us up through the thick coastal forest. The trail gets steeper as we walk through a maze of tree roots and green lush vegetation. The steeper part of the trail ends once we reach the rocky plateau, which has a much more bush-like vegetation and it is well exposed to the warm light of the sun. Here we encounter our first Nepenthes, Nepenthes albomarginata. This species is unmistakable thanks to its white color around the peristome, which apparently seems to be a perfect trap for termites. All over the rocky floors we find many plants of Nepenthes gracilis, with its long stems and big clusters of tiny pictures. It doesn't take long to encounter also one of the finest lowland Nepenthes, Nepenthes rafflesiana. The trail continues through the bushes and the ground gets much wetter and sandy. many points, wooden platforms make the walk easier and prevent us from getting soggy shoes. The vegetation here is nice and open, and all around us many plants of Nepenthes are easily spotted. Many of them are in flower and big clusters of plants can be seen growing on top of different bushes and trees, forming sometimes impressive structures that look like some kind of sculptures.
the open areas alternate with more shaded forests and tree roots grow all over the path, helping us avoid the waterlogged sand and keep our shoes dry. More and more trees are taken over by beautiful bunches of Nepenthes grasses. But not all plants are up in the trees. Many beautiful specimens are hiding under the thick grasses, just like this beautiful lower picture of Nepenthes rafflesiana. Such incredible colors! Everywhere we look, we keep finding more and more plants. We find a stunning color variation between them, from more white to darker ones. We continue through the wet trail. The soggy sand seems to be the perfect ground for some sun dews. And that's where we find the endemic Drosera spatulata, Varbacoensis. The plants are incredibly tiny and are easily missed if you don't look carefully enough. At the end of the wooden platforms, we reach a beautiful viewpoint. And here we find also some crazy textures of rocks under our feet. We take a few minutes of rest and we enjoy the view. The next section of the loop is going to be a much shadier forest, rich in mosses and thicker vegetation. Here we find an iconic species of lowland Nepenthes, Nepenthes ampullaria. The pictures are found all over the ground like a carpet, and they can be seen in many clusters and groups. The rosettes of pitchers are also growing higher up on the vining plants, but the leaves they are attached to are almost invisible. The environment changes once again, and we end up one more time in a rocky, wet, open section, where we can observe many seedlings of Nepenthes gracilis growing in almost waterlogged conditions. Hiding in the bushes, we also find the first intermediate picture of Nepenthes rafflesiana. The wings are still present, but the picture already has the typical elongated shape of the upper traps. Many more colorful plants are waiting to be spotted around the thick vegetation. With some luck, both lower and upper pitchers can be seen. Oh. 
Rafflesiana is definitely the most common species found in these open areas. We were very impressed by the intense color variation. Hanging on three branches, we also came across an elegant red wine color upper picture. Once again, we find many plants of Nepenthes ampullaria scattered around, but this time we find much more color variation. We also spot a hybrid with Nepenthes rafflesiana. The vegetation continues to change and slowly we are getting closer towards our final destination. We get closer and closer to the beach, and with our surprise we also meet some of the local proboscis monkeys jumping around the trees. We finally reach the beach and from there we admire the towering Mount Santubong in the distance. This mountain will be our target for the next episode. After spending some time admiring the beautiful rock formation of Baco coastline, we make our way back to the headquarters and admire the last proboscis monkeys before sunset. I hope you enjoyed the short walk around Baco National Park and I'm looking forward to seeing you again in our next episode. Thank you for watching.